Hi, this is Jonah Dempsey, and I'm in Ibiza. Today I want to talk about color transference. We know that colors transfer. I want to look at the color transference through the lens of resilience. So in the recent videos, we've been looking at colors 1 and 2 as low resilience, 3 and 4 as medium resilience, 5 and 6 as high resilience. Now, I want to ask how that works when color transfers. We know on the design side, the color locks in. It actually stops transferring when you're following your strategy and authority, when you're sort of living your design. Um, you're not going to have any color transference there. But on the personality side, it continues to transfer. And there's a reason for that, which is so you can kind of see the other side. Um, you know, I'm a desire person. I have to sort of poke my head into innocence periodically. The fear people have to go into need periodically. Now, we don't want to spend most of our time there. Maybe it's like 80-20. I spend 20% of my time in innocence. It's almost like my downtime. Then I go back to desire. And really, most of the time, I mean, it might even end up, you might end up getting so locked into your core motivation that days or weeks go by before you really come up for air, so to speak, in the opposite. But then this raises the question, what is happening when you're going into your transference? particularly through the lens of resilience. What is happening with resilience? Am I bringing my resilience with me or am I sort of losing my resilience? And it's an open question. I don't quite have an answer for that other than to say that it seems to me that the problem with the transference is that we actually keep our resilience levels. That is to say, if you are second color, that's low resilience, and you transfer to fifth color, it seems that you're taking your low resilience with you and your pessimism and that when you're in guilt, transferring from hope, you're actually not optimistic enough. That guilt is meant to be optimistic. It's fundamentally optimistic because it says we can fix this. And when you go into it, you're not going to, um, excuse me, you're not going to necessarily have enough optimism. The same thing. Say you're in guilt and you're transferring to hope, you're going to be too optimistic. The, the transferred guilt into hope is going to be optimistic that someone will quit drinking and they're not. Optimistic that, that you're going to make it rich and you don't, right? It's like this, it's like you're overly optimistic, you're not pessimistic enough. That hope is supposed to be pessimistic. That fundamentally at its healthiest, at its best, it is pessimistic. Fear is naturally pessimistic. This probably won't work, so let's make sure we can prove to ourselves and really know it's going to work and test and have, have everything in triplicate and so on. When it transfers to need, it's overly pessimistic. It's overly pessimistic. It's not realistic enough about what the needs really are. You know, it's not being realistic. Well, when need is transferring to fear, it's not being pessimistic enough. It's thinking that it knows, but it hasn't really tested or made sure, you know? So you can kind of do this game with each of them. I guess the last one to look at is desire. That's what I am. And having desire, which is fundamentally realistic, transfer over to uh, innocence, which is optimistic, I'm just not optimistic enough. If I look at how the world, quote unquote, really is, I bring my harsh realism with me. I don't actually see the sort of silver lining or the positivity or the fact that everything is for the greater good from one perspective. Meanwhile, when the innocence people try to be leaders, they're way too optimistic. They think it's all good. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't make a difference. It does make a difference, right? When you're a leader, when you're leading people, um, you know, we want our leaders to be realistic. We want our Buddhas to be optimistic. So it's kind of like that. If you look at the mystical keynotes, uh, teachers are meant to be pessimistic. Gurus are meant to be pessimistic. Leaders are meant to be realistic. Masters are meant to be realistic. Messengers are meant to be optimistic. Optimistic, they can get the message across. They can deliver a message of value. And, and Buddhas, the sixth color, are also fundamentally meant to be optimistic. So yeah, curious to hear your thoughts here. Definitely an interesting way to look at color and color transference.